Welcome to Property Deconstructed with Mark Ericello from Master Advocate Real Estate Services. I'm Pat from Tell Your Story Media, and this is a collective wisdom of everything with property and real estate and all the joys involved with uh, property and real estate. And we invite different service providers into the studio to chat about the uh, the different uh, things when it comes to the process. And we're talking about the law uh, today. Mark Ericello, welcome back, mate. Hey, thanks, Pat. Thanks for having me back. Always uh, glad to be here uh, yes. and good to see you. So, yes, yeah, when purchasing property, the law and risks involved uh, mm. and, and due diligence, very important uh, Absolutely. to protect your future as well. Yes, yes. And uh, there's always hidden things in there with the, with contracts and things that you need an expert to point out to you because you don't want to get to the signing bit and think, oh, I didn't know about that part. Yes, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, everyone's got a different appetite for risk and some people take a lot more risk, but uh, yeah. we'd never advise our clients when buying to act without getting a solicitor or, you know, conveyancer or solicitor and legal advice uh, and pre-purchase um, you know, risk be, assessment of contracts. You'd be crazy. You'd be crazy not to, don't yeah. you reckon, Mark? No, you would be. And, and you know, a lot of people still do it. So, you know, they think they just need it once they've purchased and at the mm. conveyancing in. And, mm. uh, yeah, that's that's the important uh, important step that we're going to talk about today. Love it. Well, the, uh, the title of this uh, episode, What You Need to Know uh, About the Law, when the for the pre-purchase of the contract review as well terms and conditions and due diligence, we have a special guest. We do. Yes. Do you want to tell? Well, it's John Mellier. John Mellier of Mellier Lawyers, and yeah, for the sake of transparency, John's uh, been one of my very close mentors. He's actually my brother-in-law right, as well, okay. but he's been oh, uh, kind enough to share a lot of wisdom here today. Uh, and and uh, you know, give give our uh, listeners some some tips. Welcome to uh, the show, John. Thanks for uh, uh, joining us, mate. Hello, Pat. Hello, Mark. How are you? Good, good, good. Does Mark pull you up at every barbecue and sort of pull you aside and, you know, try to pick your brain at every as, family? As, as, mu- <laughs> as much as he can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't mind that, do you? I do no. the same. I, well, I, you know, because we sort of move in similar circles, so I've been on the you phone know, to John, John a yeah. few times as well. There's always a disclaimer that it's not direct legal advice, but uh, you yeah. know, we're just sharing some tips here. Yes, yes, that's right. I mean, Oh, always, yes, uh, yes. So, so, so basically um, any advice that you need you should get your own advice in relation to anything specific and this is advice of a general nature yes. and um, you should consult a lawyer okay yeah, yeah it's good to say that of course because we're trying to do our best to give general information through these uh, these channels but take what we give you and then you know you got to uh, ensure it suits your unique situation talk to a lawyer exactly yeah? Correct, yeah now we're talking about we will get into the thing but you know you're so generous and kind with your information John so there is a there's a book and there's a podcast and there's other things that you do as well where you share this information. Yes, correct, Pat. So um, at the moment, I've got a um, I've got a couple of podcasts that are floating around. Um, there's one called um, Legal Ease Australia uh, with Tom and Jonas. Oh yeah, and um, we invite um, barristers and other experts on and talk about the law and break it down. And um, I'm also in a series put together and run by Kevin Hillier. Yes. And it's called um, The Legal Minefield. Right. And that's that's on as well uh, on the channels of Spotify and um, it's etc. Yep, yep. Well, you've got some uh, uh, heavy guns here with Kevin Hillier, wonderful sort of uh, they're, radio they're great, personality. Yeah, great listening. I, you know, even though I've had, um, you know, John speaking to me all my life, uh, you know, I love, love tuning in and listening and learning yes. on that show. And then you've got your your, your um, book that's been released as well. That's more for education for, for it, lawyers, is it? And, yes, it is. It's for um, the training of young lawyers. So it's, a, it's about legal practice in Australia and it's just giving them the basic tools with which what to do and how to do it when you start working in a law firm. Great, great, great. Now, uh, I know you cover different areas, but let's focus on property, uh, property and yes. the fact that uh, you, you're purchasing a property, uh, Mark. When does all the legal start and how does it happen? Well, it's, it should start as soon as we've targeted a property. As buyers advocates and independent buyers advocates, we always advise our clients as soon as we've shortlisted a property and the contracts of sale and Section 32 is available, it's time to bring in the team. Right. Uh, if they don't have their own legal representative, we'd recommend one for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where we'd start with, the, you know, in this episode talking about you know, the solicitor and pre-purchase review, contract reviews, terms and conditions, uh, you know, the due diligence steps, John, that you'd highlight or risks that people make that you see common common mistakes? 
Yeah, so effectively, if you're buying a property, you need to do your due diligence. And what we mean by due diligence is have a conveyance or a lawyer review the contract. So in the contract of sale, there'll be general terms, which are the general terms, you know, for example, when you pay the deposit, what happens with settlement, et cetera. Then what people like to do is add special conditions. And the problem with that is special conditions vary or change the general conditions in the contract. And special conditions also affect purchasers' rights and abilities to make claims or do things down the track. So it's important to get those reviewed so you know what they're doing. So basically, in simple terms, they're trying to alter the standard contract mm -hmm. that you're going to sign when you buy a property. And that's to their benefit, not your benefit. So it's never to the purchaser's benefit. It's always to the vendor's uh, benefit when that happens. And that's why you need someone to have a look at them. So for example, in the contract, there might be a clause in the general terms that says, um, for example, if something was not right with one of the representations made by the agent, the selling agent or the vendor, um, you know, you can do what you need to do to take action. They'll have a special condition saying, well, we don't make any warranties or representations and you can't come after us. So that's the type of example of things they'll do. So basically, a purchaser will get the following. They'll get a contract of sale and a Section 32 document. A Section 32 document is required under the Sale of Land Act in Victoria. The reason that came about is basically to give purchasers some sort of um, advice about the property they're buying. So there are mandatory items that have to be in a Section 32. So in Section 32, there'll be a title search with the title particulars. There'll be a planning certificate to see if there are any planning restrictions. There'll be a roads certificate. There'll be council rates, water rates to see what the rates are involved. Then most importantly, there should be also a, uh, if there's been building works by the owner, there should be a building warranty, a builder's warranty insurance certificate, an occupancy permit, Etc. If it's an owner builder, then within seven years of building, you must have an uh, occupancy permit, owner builder's warranty insurance, etc. Mm. All these things have to be disclosed. If they're not disclosed to the purchaser, then the purchaser will have the right to pull out of the contract. Right, right. And so you need somebody to run their eye over the Section 32 and make sure all those elements are, are in there or well, is it? It is. It's, it's the pre-purchase review um, from, from solicitors like John would actually be highlighting these parts uh, that were disclosed or, or needed to be disclosed and at least the buyer, if they're not aware, sometimes they make assumptions with what can be done with the land. There might even be some, uh, you know, certain covenants that they weren't aware of right, or easements, right. uh, even, you know, caveats and things like that, that at least the legal representative and solicitor can explain them hmm. before you step in. You may still want to step into the purchase, hmm. but at least you know, at least you know the law of the land. So how early in the – I'm putting my, myself in the situation, purchasing a home, I'm looking at the Section 32 and it's got those elements where you think, oh, I didn't know that. Yes. So you're getting it quite early in the process. Straight away. Straight, straight away, away during negotiations. Contracts. Yeah. As soon as the right. contract's as soon as you say, I want to purchase that property. Yeah. Before you sign yep. anything. Right. And as soon as a contract's made available to you from, say, the sales agent or vendor, mm. if they're selling it mm. privately, they've had their solicitor prepare it, mm. uh, then uh, you, you'd get the review as soon as it's in your hand, that hot minute you know, – Right, right. So I should always be saying to everybody when purchasing a property, look, I'm interested, but I want to see the Section 32. And that starts Correct. the Correct, and you want to see the special conditions in the contract. Yeah, right. Special oh. conditions are, are, are the ones that you know, come up tricky, even with penalty interest and things like that, that you know, as a solicitor you, you always highlight uh, for us in our purchases. Um, because you know, if a client's going to default at settlement, um, I've seen that being changed and manipulated a lot by solicitors preparing contracts. Is that right, John? Yeah. So, for example, the standard interest rate will be under the penalty interest rate, which is about, you know, whatever, 10%, but they'll add maybe an extra 4% or 6% on top. If you don't settle on time. So oh, that means right. on a day Yeah, so if you don't settle rate. on time, you pay that percentage yeah. on top of the sale prices yeah. uh, right. on a daily basis. And that's one you should say. Well, yeah, and it could, it may not be, sometimes it is the purchaser's fault why there's a delay, but it could be one of the parties on their side, you know, bank other reasons, and you're paying that, that daily interest until you sort it out mm. uh, and risk um, the other party, the vendor, 
rescinding the contract, and that that risk you know uh, can hurt people's um, uh, yeah position as well. Yes. So do you just send it back and say, look, I don't like that special condition; it needs to be removed? Yeah, I tell I'll, I'll instruct the client to say we, this needs to be removed before you sign, and this is the reason why. Mm-hmm. And so then they'll they'll take it off. It's those who think they can do it on their own who might sort of not see that uh, not mark, be aware. and then yeah. you know, because uh, does anybody re- ever resist that, John? When you say remove that special condition, yeah. and say well, we're yeah, not. you do get you do get um, you will get um, other solicitors who've drawn the contract or conveyances resisted. Yeah. and tell their vendor clients, no, no, no. And then at the end of the day, we, we tell the client, look, you're at risk if you agree to it. It's your decision ultimately whether you want to take that risk, but we advise against it. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And I guess it depends on the market, you know, time in the market, sentiment. If they've got a lot of hot buyers making offers without any conditions uh-huh. or resistance, uh, they'll take the easier target. So you've got to then decide how much do I compromise, what risks do right, I take if right. I really want this property. Uh, but at least you've had your legal advice. Yes. You, you know where you stand. But yes. uh, I've got a word for us. Leverage. Is it leverage, John? As, it as Mark it says, is. it's all as the Correct. market shifts, you leverage, you know, you might be on the good end of it all yeah. as you just take what you, you're given in a way if the market's quite hot. You've got to sort of uh, yeah. evaluate all that. And all the advisors, it, yeah. It's leverage, Pat. There it's always are. down to leverage. Do you have a chapter in your book on leverage? No, not for the young <laughs> solicitors, no. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's... For Pat Panetta. Yeah. My chapter on leverage. So there you are. You've got to, you've got to sort of evaluate the whole sort of picture and work out what you can and can't sort of demand in a yes. way or ask for. Yeah, and that's the, that's the pre-purchase side. And I was uh, hoping, John, if you've still got a little bit of time to stick around for our um, uh, episode uh, six where we'd look at the – you know, yeah, post- yeah I'd, I'd, I'd love to. Thanks, Pat and Mark. Yeah, so we'll oh, be, on, yeah. be back in a few minutes. Uh, Pat, if that's okay, and we'll, Absolutely. We'll, we'll have uh, discussions on what to do at the period of settlement and risks involved there. I love it. Some great advice there from John Melia. As Mark says, we'll come back and we now uh, move to the next stage. So join us uh, soon on Property Deconstructed with Pat and Mark and our special guest, John Melia from Melia Lawyers, Barristers and Solicitors.